Oh, I'm just strolling around. Oh, what are you doing no. here? That's crazy. <laughs> I can't believe it. In this studio, How all this time. It? I don't even know. You want to sit down? Uh, that, all sit right. down. <laughs> Greetings, everybody. Welcome to Talent Spotlight, the one and only show where we shine a light on the chosen talent listen to their background story, their future aspirations, and we watch them perform. Today, I am with Robio. Ah. What's going on? <laughs> Hello. Hello, one and all. How's your day so far? It's been good. It's been a nice morning, actually. The sun's shining, so yeah. can't complain, even though it's still cold. Beautiful day. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I would like to ask you, how did dance come into your life? Mm. Big question, I know, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> like in your face. In your face, big question, spotlight. <laughs> um, dance came into my life, I think uh, just my family actually. My family are pretty musical. My mum used to dance when she was younger. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, my uncles were quite a big group called the Pasadenas, uh -huh. uh, the 70s and 80s, and they flang down some moves as well. Right. So, yeah, my family are quite um, artsy fancy, I'd say. And um, my cousins, like Brooke, Roxy, April, they all dance as well. Um, we're all part of the same generation. So I think it's just kind of been handed down and we've all kind of gone. I've, since young, I was like springing about. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, I want to do everything. And That's my awesome. mum was like, we got to get you to somewhere to put all of that. Mm. energy um, and then from there I just fell in love with it since I was about seven and uh, that's early I've, yeah, yeah quite early and then I just carried on going and here you I are haven't stopped. damn that's crazy <laughs> um, so what really struck me when I watch you perform you have this uh, vulnerability which is extremely powerful and something that not a lot of people have when they when they dance mm. Is that something you, you have always had or is that something you have found during your journey? Yeah, I think it's a finding. I think there's a constant finding with art in general. Yes. I think, yeah, Word. You, you're constantly changing as change is the only thing that is inevitable, isn't it? And come I think, on. come on. Bring it up top. That's great. Oh, some five. Some there, five. We there we go, there we go. That was great. Um, yeah, I think it's, 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 you're constantly finding, and as you change, and as years go by, your art changes as well, yeah. and your mentality, and your body, and so you adapt, and you kind of go, oh, okay, now I can find this, and I think I've gotten more honest, uh, more vulnerable, and open throughout the years, yeah. which has helped my movement to portray that as well, and I think we all move in the way that we are, yeah, there's like that's an, true. There's an element of that, you know, you see somebody dance and you're like, you don't want to judge them, but you kind of go, oh, maybe they're this way, this type of person. And there's something quite special about that, I think. Word. Yeah. I love it. So powerful. Yeah. Um, so, I want to talk about Message in a Bottle, because hey. it's a phenomenal show. I know you have... Am I right when I say you choreographed some stuff for it? As well? I haven't, but you I haven't. am resident director, which you, oh, shit. makes me oversee everything. That's great. Yeah. I went to see this show and I was completely uh, blown away by the storytelling and how mm. well they managed. All the dancers were obviously phenomenal. The cast is out of this world. So but much. just the way that it was orchestrated and put together. Mm. Um, tell me about that process. Yes. Um, was it fun? Oh, it's hella fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's actually, I'm still going through the process. You are, uh, So right. we are up in the Peacock now. Uh, we are in London until the 21st of March, and then we tour. We're actually doing the uh, international tours in Luxembourg, Switzerland, and Lyon. Wow. And then we'll be doing some UK stuff as well. Uh, in terms of rehearsals, we had a 10 week period of rehearsals, which I've never had. I don't think anyone's ever <laughs> had. We're normally cut short for rehearsal. Well, in my training experience, it's normally like you don't have much time. No. Uh, but this was so different and actually really nice to have a long 
period of time where you can actually delve into story and delve into characters, uh, movement. And um, yeah, I think Kate is great. Kate yeah. Prince really put us into that world and she helped set that up um, so much. And she's great at directing and choreographing. Um, and we just had a great dynamic, I think, energy wise. And it's a true story, you know, it's things that are very relevant and happening today. Yeah. And um, I think it just touches all of our hearts and touches everyone's hearts as well. Definitely does. Yeah. I was very moved, especially yeah. in the first act. I think I shared a tear at least yeah. twice. Yeah, I think we've yeah. all had our crying moments. Yeah. <laughs> and we've all just been like, Bleh. That's so special. When um, you can but do it that. is, yeah, it is special when you can move move the crowd, move yourself as well, and, and find that place. Um, uh, Lucas was associate choreographer as well. Yes. So he had input creatively, and I think we just had a really good dynamic between us uh, that helped us just make sure everybody was safe, yeah. okay, feeling well, you know, we're just very caring about each other. And again, the dancers, I just want to shout them out because they are really what keeps me going, Yeah. honestly. Fantastic. Very powerful show. I literally, I don't, it's been a while since I saw a show like that. Yeah. That really sort of, yeah, got into the soul. Um, also second act. I think both the first act is very, um, you sort of don't know what to expect to begin yeah. with. You think you're in for a happy tale. Yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I don't know if you should say that, but <laughs> obviously things uh, happen and then it's sort of, it hits you. Yeah. And then the second act, I think, is more visual. Yes. Um, which I really enjoyed. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the people things. that work behind the scenes, production, sound, projection, yeah. it's just like, you know, we have, we've had a dramaturg, we've had our producers, they've all been so incredible. And mm. yeah, I mean, when anyone does come and watch the show, it's, you just, you see a visual epicness and... Yeah, I think it's it's brilliant. It is brilliant. It's brilliant. Um, so I know that you have obviously we have worked together uh, on several occasions. Yes. For the screen video was one. Yes. But also for uh, I th you helped me out. You assisted me on Ollie Merce. I did on really, X Factor. Really um, and you've done loads of other commercial jobs and you know Rita Ora. Yes, I was on tour with all Rita. These things which is fantastic, but I want to hear, because I know you've done a lot of theater as well, music, musical theater. Well, how do you compare the two? Do you have a preference to the different processes or mm, what's your general um, sort of? They're very different worlds, actually. Yeah. They really are. Um, I enjoy both of them, to be honest. It's hard to compare them because they are so... Different, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> opposite. Um, but I think what keeps me going again is the dance and just being able to do what I love. Yeah. Um, there's always things that you can find and complain about and go, oh, I'm not sure I like this or I'm not sure I'm into this. Um, but overall, yeah, I think that they're so, so different um, that it's hard to kind of put them side by side. Uh, but yeah, you're, you're getting paid to do what you love with both of them. And I think Thank that that's... A, a special thing um, and I've found I've managed to find the right kind of people to work with within those worlds as well I think That's you it. have to be yeah. with the right energy and what makes you feel right you know and yeah. if you're just jumping into something that's like you know you're not gonna have a great time or you're not already not feeling quite settled within it then I think you're doing it for the wrong reasons uh, whereas if you're, you know, if you found something and you're like, okay, I'm going to jump into this world, but I feel okay with the people around me, the dancers, the directors, you know, you have to really take account into all of it, uh, yeah. what's going to make you feel happy. And as long as you're happy, you're good, you know. That is so, so true. I completely agree. I think it really is about making yourself happy with the process, but Absolutely. really, essentially, it's about the people. So you can go, you can jump from any sort of aspect within the industry, but it is about the people around you. Yeah. And that's what you come to learn the more you work, right? Uh, the more experience you have, the absolutely. more like, it's, it's, it's not about the big names or the big whatnot. Yeah, after a while you just kind of go, ah, as long as I've got good people around me, yeah. it's all good. I think that's important to remember and yeah. to remind people of. Yeah, 
I agree. I it's, agree. Uh, it's a luxury when you have good people around you. For sure. Absolutely. Um, I was going to ask you so many things. <laughs> um, All the things. So who trained you? I'm just curious. Like who actually sort of, who did you yeah. train from? Um, so I started when I was about seven. And I started doing kind of street dance. Uh, and I was in a group called Exposure. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I was trained by a guy called Paulie and another guy called Paige. Um, Paige is, was part of Boy Blue um, and Paulie was just doing his thing and out and there for the kids. Um, so we, you know, we started doing street dance weekend and just getting our sets together and getting costume, yeah. loved it, loved it. Um, and then I went into another company called Ricochet, which was uh, more kind of feminine. I started getting into my feminine side and yeah. like, oh, okay, I can dance like this. Come oh. on. Uh, and that's when you're, when you're a teenager as well, you think you're like 2,700. <laughs> Yeah. and you're not no. <laughs> um but it was such a good time as well that really pushed me that company and pushed my dance and made me go okay i can do more than what i think my body can do uh and then i joined um i got i auditioned for the brit school and so that's where i did all my technical training my ballet jazz tap etc and then that's when I was like, oh, okay, my body can do even more than what oh, I wow. think it can do. Yeah. Um, and that was some of the best four years of my life. 100% my teachers were amazing and really they look out for you. Um, and it's a, it's a great school for that. Um, and then I became, from Ricochet, we molded into Definitives, which Glenn Hudson uh, is now training. Yeah. everybody up um so that's when i started getting into my own thing as well and musicality became big and just music and dance just became like a real thing um and then i started creating my own pieces and getting onto my own stuff and getting a bit more abstract and a bit weird yeah and um I, enjo I enjoy the weird yeah <laughs> yes for the weird yes for the weird always yeah so i started getting into that and um my teachers from Brit supported me and, and wanted me to do stuff. And I started working with the Royal Opera House, Hofesh Schechter, and just other little things that kind of happened as I got, as I got through. And yeah, it's been fun. So yeah, that's my training really, in a nutshell. I'm a fan. I'm a huge fan. I'm a fan of you. No, I'm a fan. No, I'm a fan. No, no, no I'm a fan. <laughs> um, so nowadays social media has, you know, obviously it's, it's sort of um, changed the industry in many ways and the dance community. Do you think it is for the better or for worse or maybe potentially both? Yeah, it is. I think it's both. It's so both. I think even, not even in just art, but just general life, it's, it's like a 50-50 thing, isn't it, with social media? It can be so positive and so good and help people push their talent and their art or yeah. whatever they're trying to when it, whether it comes to fashion, makeup, you know, it's just all out there now. Uh, but then it can also, people get really self-conscious about it and they're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do this. And you see people deleting posts and then you see them putting things back up. And it's such a, it's a weird dynamic. And I think if you've grown up in it straight away, there's almost, your life evolves around it a little bit. Which is interesting because I grew up in a time where it was like coming into yeah. that. Uh, so I didn't have like, we didn't have smartphones when I was growing up as a kid. I had Snake and on Nokia, you Me know? <laughs> I love Snake. Loved Snake. The best game ever. Best game. I was terrible but at it. <laughs> great. But this was, this was what we had. And yeah. we had one computer in the house and that was what I went on after school on yeah. MSN, you know, just to see if I can chat to people. <laughs> and, but it yeah. just slowly started getting more uh, social and with everybody. And Facebook. now it's just a lot here. And for me, um, I think it's a 50-50 thing. I think it's how you use it uh, and what you're using it for. Um, Personally, I'm, I try to use it just for my art because I think it's a good platform for advertisement uh, and marketing. 
uh, here and there for personal stuff, but not as much because no. you don't really. I think that there, you've got to reserve a little bit of stuff for you and yeah. keep your stuff special, you know? I agree. Um, not everything needs to be out there, so. Completely agree. Yeah. Um, I think it's, um, yeah, it's important to use it as a tool. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And not let it sort of um, control Take your over. actions. Yeah, yeah. Cause it, it will if you let it. And it's important to sort of separate yourself from that a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, what makes you happy? That's a great question. That's a great question. What makes you happy? It could what be anything. What makes me happy? Do you know what? Um, I like simple things. I like very, I like the little things. I like having a cup of tea in the morning. I like sleeping. Yeah. I like seeing my family, giving a hug to my mum. Right. These are the things that make me very happy, you know. Dance, of course, makes me, fulfills me in all kinds of ways mm. uh, and keeping up my talent and my art. Um, but really the simple things in life, just the way that, you know, if you see somebody on the train and even being in the show and uh, sometimes I don't watch the dancers and I just look at the audience reactions. And People watching. Yeah, and those things just really, there's such a nice thing about that that makes me feel quite fulfilled because you feel like you're the only person and you're just watching this movie and you know, you create your life, you know, you yeah. have the power to make yourself feel good as well. And I think you can choose those moments, even in the, the dark times, you know, yeah. you can build yourself up. And it is about having a strong mentality and a strong willpower to get there. But I think, yeah, you can always find something that just even if you walk outside and just take a breath of the fresh air, you can go, yeah. actually, do you know what? Life isn't that bad. And it's, it's not that deep and yeah, it's quite simple. And those are the things that make me really, really happy actually. I think that's such a good answer. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that was fantastic. I was like, yeah. Yes, preach. Rosia, please, yes. Please, that's so great. <laughs> um, okay, where do you want to go next as an artist? Um, yeah, it's a good question. I am open to it actually. I'm really open to you've whatever. you've done so much already. Yeah, I've done a few things and I've, you know, I've dabbled in so much. I think at the moment, uh, I'm so focused on making sure everybody, the company is okay and uh, making sure Message in a Bottle is going well. We're going till June. Mm. So it's taking up my life and I'm, that's where my headspace is at. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think because at the moment I'm making sure everybody's okay and it's I'm kind of directing, you know, somebody, somebody else's baby in a way. I think uh, the next step is for me to do my thing and direct my baby and see how that goes and yeah. uh, what world I want to put that in, whether that's theatre, commercial, site specific, you know, galleries. Um, I'm interested in kind of finding out where my art fits actually. And I think I'm just going to keep delving. And I think, again, like I said before, it's constant change, it's constant findings. And I'm happy to like the unexpected. Well, thank you so much for being on this show. It's a really, pleasure. Really appreciate it. Thank you. You for want to tell us me. what you're gonna uh, perform for us? Yeah, um, I'm just gonna freestyle. Today. Come on, <laughs> bring it. Uh, yeah, it's actually uh, my cousin. He produces and uh, he's oh. kind of he mixes between hip hop and like soul. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna have a little freestyle moment. It's been a minute. Uh, been Amazing. doing a lot of choreography, so I'm excited to just have a little like. Hey. Yes. And we're excited to watch it. Thank you so much for being on the show. Pleasure, mate. Bring it in. Hug alert. Hug alert. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Hug alert. Some five. Some five. Oh, that was great. Thank you, mate.
Thank you for watching. If you like this video and you would like to see more, then click right here to subscribe to my channel and remember to press the notification bell to stay up to date with new content coming out in the future. Till next time. Peace.